Good morning learners. Today we will be discussing about returns to scale using isocons. After completion of this course, you will be able to understand what is returns to scale, what are the different assumptions that we take while designing and drawing returns to scale, what is increasing returns to scale and the reasons behind it, what is constant returns to scale and the reasons related to it, and at the last, what is decreasing returns to scale and the reasons of decreasing returns to scale. So let's begin this lecture. By term return, we mean that the change in output and whereas scale stands for the quantity of input that is utilized in the production function. So the returns to scale basically talks about the change in output that is happening because of change in quantities of input or factors of production. There are four factors of production, land, labor, capital and entrepreneur. Now, these four factors of production are utilized in different manner for yielding a given amount of output. There can be a short run production function or there can be a long run production function. A short run production function is one where only one factor of production is varied, whereas other factors of production are kept constant, whereas in long run we can vary all the factors of production, be it land, be it labor or be it capital. Returns to scale is a phenomena of long run. By term return, we mean the change in output that is happening and by term scale, we mean the quantity of input that is utilized in a production function. So, returns to scale is basically an economic phenomena that gives us the relationship between the change in input or the proportionate change in input of factors of production and the resultant change in output that is happening because of the change in input. Now, Let's discuss different assumptions that are associated with returns to scale. In returns to scale using isoquant, we talk about two factors of production that can be varied, mostly labor and capital. The labor and capital are used in a given fixed proportion. The technology of the production is kept as constant and it does not change during the course of production. Now, on the basis of these three assumptions, we get three different types of returns to scale. The first one is increasing returns to scale. The second one is decreasing returns to scale. And the third one is constant returns to scale. Now, let's discuss increasing returns to scale in bit detail. By term increasing returns to scale, we mean that the proportionate change in output will be higher as compared to the proportionate change in input. We can understand it with the help of this table. We can see that there are four combinations where input A and input B are used. The percentage change in input is 100 from 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16. 5 to 10, 10 to 20, and 20 to 40. That is, the proportionate change in input is constant and it is 100. And there is a resultant change in output because of this change in input. The output increased from 100 to 300, from 300 to 10,000, and from 10,000 to 50,000. So we can see that in the first case, the proportionate change in output is 200. In second, it is 233% and in third case, it is 300%. So, this is an example of increasing returns to scale. You can see that the change in output was constant, it was 100, but the resultant change in output was higher than that of 100. So, returns to scale means that the change in output will be higher than the proportionate change in factors of production or inputs. Let's discuss 
reasons behind increasing returns to scale and we will also look to increasing returns to scale in a graphical manner. Let's discuss different reasons of increasing returns to scale and we will also try and look into the graph of increasing returns to scale. So let's start with the graph part. Let's assume on y-axis we take units of capital and on x-axis there is unit of lever. Now, this is your first ISO point. Let's say it is yielding us an output of 100. This is second ISO point yielding us an output of 200. This is third ISO point yielding us an output of, let's assume, 400. Now, if you look, The proportionate change in factors of production is less as compared to the proportionate change in output. That is, output is increasing at a higher rate as compared to the change in input. Thus, the isoquants are closer to each other. Now, there are different reasons that are associated with increasing returns to scale. The first reason is indivisibility of factors. See, in real life, all the factors of production cannot be perfectly divisible. Let's take an example. We require, hypothetically speaking, in any production function, 0.75 units of lever. Now, it is not possible to divide lever into smaller units. So, we will add one extra lever in place of 0.75 units. So this indivisibility of factors will lead to an increased amount of addition of lever, thus the output will increase at a greater pace. Second one is degree of specialization and division of lever. As the production increases, the chances of division of lever and degree of specialization also enhances. It has been seen that by division of lever and by by bringing the degree of specialization into production function, the total output increases at an increasing rate. Thus, because of it, your output will increase at a higher rate as compared to that of inputs. The third one is dimensional economics. See, what happens is, because of dimensional economics, we can see that the change in output is less as compared to change in input. Let's take a very simple example. Let's assume this is a room of 2 by 2. The area of this room is 2 into 2 that is equal to 4 meters square. But if you look to the volume, it will be 2 by 2 by 2. That is 8 square meter. Now let's increase the size of this room by 1 meter. The area will be 3 into 3, that is 9. Look to the resultant change in volume. It will be 27. So because of these dimensional economics aspect, what happens is the change in input is going to be less as compared to the change in output. Now, let's look into constant returns to scale. Constant returns to scale states that the change in output is proportional to the change in input or factors of production. We can look at with the help of this given table. Now if you look, the change in output and the change in input is depicted in this table. There are different combinations. The percentage change in input is constant and it is 100. If you look into this table, we can see that the percentage change in input is constant and it is 100. And the resultant change in output because of increase in input 
is also constant and it is 100. So, constant returns to scale state that the change in output will be proportion to, proportionate to the change in factors of production or change in inputs. Now, there are different reasons associated with constant returns to scale. We will look to all these reasons and the graph of constant returns to scale in the next slide. Let's assume there are two factors of production. Labor on x-axis and capital on y-axis. Now, constant returns to scale will have isoquants. that are equidistant from each other. That means the, the gap between the two isocons is going to be constant. Now there are different reasons associated with constant returns to scale. The first one is perfect divisibility of factors. Now see if there is a perfect divisibility of factor it is very much possible that the returns to scale is bound to be constant. The second one is Proportionality, if the inputs are used in a proportional manner and they are perfectly divisible, the resultant change in output will be equivalent to the resultant change in input. The returns to scale phenomena is mostly seen in the case where the firm has reached and attained their optimum capacity. That means the firm that has reached to their optimum level of production will start operating in constant returns to scale. The another phenomena is your decreasing returns to scale. Now let's look into decreasing returns to scale. The term decreasing returns to scale states that the proportionate change in output is less than the proportionate change in factors of production. Now we will understand this phenomena again by using this table. Now if you look the proportionate change in input is constant and it is 100 but the resultant change in output is continuously decreasing and diminishing. Initially it is 50 then it is becoming 40 then it is becoming 24.9. Thus we can see that the proportionate change in output is less than the proportionate change in input. Now there are different reasons for decreasing returns to scale. We will look to those reasons and the graph of decreasing returns to scale in the next slide. Let's look into the graph of decreasing returns to scale. Let's assume there are two factors of production capital on y axis and labor on L x axis and these are isoquants. You can look that the isoquants are or the distance between the isoquants is continuously increasing as we are moving from one isocon to another isocon. This is happening because the proportionate change in input is higher than the proportionate change in output that is the output is increasing at a very very decreasing rate. Now there are different reasons associated with it. The first important reason is managerial inefficiency. See as the size of the firm increases or if as you let's assume the size of the firm is constant but the management of the firm is not able to control the factors of production is not able to look into the different aspects associated with the production process the firm will not work in an efficient manner and this inefficiency will lead to the less returns as compared to that of the firm that is managed in an efficient manner. Second, as the size of the firm increases, the coordination between the different departments, the level of control many a times goes down. So because of this lack of coordination and lack of control, the firm will not operate in a proper manner. Thus showing the signs of decreasing returns to scale. See what happens is 
It is not always the scenario that the different production functions or the different production processes will give or will have different returns to scale. But the reality is that different returns to scale are seen in one production process. That is, within a production process, we will be able to see increasing returns to scale, constant returns to scale, and diminishing returns to scale. So, the graph of it will look something like this. Capital on Y axis, labor on X axis. This is a much more realistic and a much more practical returns to scale depiction. See what happens is as the farm increases in size initially because of division of labor, degree of specialization and indivisibility of factors. What happens is the farm will see increasing returns to scale. After attainment of the optimum level, the farm will move into constant returns to scale and later on with the increase in size the level of managerial efficiencies lack of control lack of coordination will start entering into that form and the, the form will see the decreasing returns to scale this is all about this lecture thank you